Hi, everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome to Great Lakes Now and the Belle Isle Aquarium's live event with our first ever cockroach cam. Uh, we are going to take you behind the scenes at the Belle Isle Aquarium in Detroit to see the Madagascar hissing cockroaches as brought to you recently in a Great Lakes Now segment. I'm Sandra Swoboda. I'm the program director for Great Lakes Now, and I am so happy to be joined today at the Belle Isle Aquarium by Amanda Murray, who's an aquarist there. Hi, Amanda. Hi. And we also have Danielle Dabney. She is a producer, Detroit-based producer for Great Lakes Now. She recently produced a segment where we went behind the scenes at three Great Lakes Aquariums. Hi, Danny. Hi. <laughs> And I'd like to give an especially warm welcome to our Facebook audience that is joining us. This is the first of a few in a series we're going to be doing with the Belle Isle Aquarium. I'd like to thank all of our supporters who make this possible, all of you who are public TV supporters and maybe members of the Belle Isle, supporters of Belle Isle, the Belle Isle Conservancy, which operates the Belle Isle Aquarium. Uh, we are gonna show you a segment from our recent Great Lakes Now show that that plays on Detroit Public Television and several other PBS channels around the Great Lakes. Uh, I would like to invite our audience to ask questions. If you see something in the segment you have a question about, or you have a question in general about these Madagascar hissing cockroaches, you can type it there on Facebook and either Amanda or Danny will answer it. So Amanda would like to handle the cockroach questions. Danny uh, could talk about the other aquariums that you'll see in the segment and if you have a question about making TV, we can, we can take that today too. So I'd like to do a short introduction before we show you the segment. Amanda Murray is at the Belle Isle Aquarium now. Amanda, I, you know, I, I wanna go, like, I guess you can't help the journalist, a little news. And we had a question from one of our audience members, Susan, how'd you get to work today with some of the flooding, the high water levels on the Detroit River? Is that affecting the aquarium there? Um, actually, the flooding is uh, on the east side of the island, the aquarium. We're a little more uh, inland and on the opposite side, so uh, flooding really didn't affect us, which is good. So I got here um, safely today. Okay, and what's that in front of you? So in front of me, I have my Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Um, I use them uh, for enrichment for the fish. So the Madagascar hissing cockroaches are not native to the Great Lakes but they are part of the Belle Isle Aquarium and they were featured in a recent segment we did going behind the scenes at the aquariums during pandemic. Uh, Danielle Dabney, as I mentioned, produced that segment for us. Danny, give us a quick overview. What are we going to see uh, when we play this segment here? Well, the segment, the idea for the segment started um, at the beginning of the Safer at Home orders and the Shed Aquarium um, produced a video where their penguins went and visited uh, their beluga whales. And so the idea of animals getting to venture out when there's not visitors at the aquarium really caught on. And so we wanted to create a piece that assured our audience that the animals would be taken care of and also that um, allowed us to, to visit with the animals from their perspective. and. Uh, one example is is the cockroach, and we really got to see the aquarium through their eyes in the segment, as you'll see. All right. Thank you for that. I'd like to remind the audience there on Facebook. Again, thanks for joining us. And if you have questions, please type them um, as you're watching or as you think of them. So with no further ado, let's go to the TV part. <laughs> what do you do when a pandemic Thousands of aquatic creatures are depending on you. We called some Great Lakes Aquarists to find out. When most public institutions close their doors due to social distancing efforts, the buoyant residents of our region's aquarium still required attention. Caretakers of these animate museums began to do what we all did. They looked for supplies. Jennifer Carter is the aquarist at the Aquatarium at Tall Ships Landing in Brockville, Ontario. The first thing that crossed our mind was really to uh, stock up on some food items for our animals because we weren't at that sure at that time it was really unsure what was going to happen there really wasn't a whole lot of information so that's the one thing that um, could really be unknown are we still going to be able to get food for our animals caretakers would need to also adapt animal training to the new safety procedures 
it's given us an opportunity to try different things, such as uh, Justin. Uh, so he's our uh, beaver. And we have kind of changed our method of training. We do target training with him in his habitat. And because we have to wear a mask, we can't necessarily use a whistle because um, it, it just doesn't fit under the mask properly. Um, so we've had to, you know, use our mouths and tooting and making different noises and making that adjustment to continue training with him. Over 32,000 animals, from belugas and sharks to stingrays and giant octopi, inhabit Chicago's Shed Aquarium. Despite stay-at-home orders, the Shed still wanted to provide the public with wildlife encounters through social media. We really kind of handed over the keys to the folks that were going to be there every day taking care of the animals and said, when you can, if you can snap a photo or a video of what you're up to, we really want to try and provide these real-time videos and insights so we can give a window for people to still see the animals that they love so much um, and understand that they're still being really well cared for even though the aquarium is closed. But while we could check out the animals on the internet, they began missing us. We have um, a rescued wood duck named Stella. So she was non-releasable. So her forever home is here at Shed, and she loves the public. She interacts at the window with the public. Really, the, the public is there in part so the animals can observe them. If you think of a fish on a coral reef, their day is going to be just a little different each day. And the public was one aspect that provided that, um, that variety to their day. So now we'll just provide that variety in, in other ways through enrichment. Happy birthday! In the absence of an adoring public, the shed's more inquisitive characters decided it was time to venture out. So a lot of our penguins love to find different things, be curious. And so now is just an opportunity to take them to different parts of the building that usually just are a little too crowded uh, for penguins to do what they want to do um, while we wait for their fan club to return. And their first big field trip became a runaway success. Who doesn't love to see a penguin and beluga say hello to each other? They speak two different languages and neither one um, I am very fluent in, but um, I, I think it was pretty safe to say that both of them um, were happy with each other. <laughs> One of the really cool things that we've seen out of this kind of penguin craze is um, the penguins are almost uh, ambassadors for some of the other animals at the aquarium. And so when Wellington went to go see our Sturgeon Touch exhibit, um, it was a really great way for us to bridge and start talking about Lake Sturgeon and how important they are to the Great Lakes and how they're a prehistoric species. And um, it's really great to kind of leverage the excitement and the interest we're seeing online and kind of help people move beyond just like one group of animals and start talking about some other animals that maybe don't get as much of a spotlight normally. In Detroit, Michigan, another aquarium wanted to try a more experimental direction. Could a featherless, furless, wingless invertebrate headline as the main act? People on average may not necessarily feel connected to Madagascar hissing cockroaches. However, um, presenting them in a more whimsical, lighthearted manner might, you know, maybe create some connection. Seeing them go around the tanks just as you might do if you were at the aquarium. The Belle Isle Aquarium is the oldest in the nation. Designed by the lauded architect Albert Kahn, the historic interior features opalescent tiles that make you feel encapsulated underwater. Drawn to the awe-inspiring space, visitors can sometimes overlook less traditional members of the menagerie. Aquarius saw the shutdown as an opportunity to introduce patrons to a bug's life. I find that when people are at home uh, wanting to experience the outside, that they are willing to maybe watch videos or an interest in learning about things maybe they wouldn't typically learn about. Um, so I think that the cockroaches may have drawn people in that way. Um, but I really think that uh, once you get to know one of these cockroaches, they're not as gross and scary as a lot of people think. 
whether a precocious penguin or a coquettish cockroach catches your fancy. These videos are helping promote a much needed sense of unity for public institutions. We had a, an interesting partnership with the Lyric Opera of Chicago, um, where they provided some uh, original scores uh, that we paired with one of our Penguin videos, which was truly epic and so interesting and something we've never done before. <laughs> And so we were able to lift Lyric Opera with some of this content as well. And so it just feels really good. As we spend our days in our own fishbowl, the aquarists believe there's real value in even virtual engagement. I hope that um, people at home watching our videos will be drawn to come visit Shed in person or at least get outside. Um, maybe they'll even just look at their pets in a different light. Through those videos, um, we can connect people to nature. Um, that's, that's the goal. That's what it's all about. But if you especially miss seeing our aquatic friends up close, the longevity of the nation's oldest aquarium is a reminder they're not going anywhere. I think that this is definitely, like with everyone, a transitional period, but also a great opportunity for growth. Um, the aquarium has withstood pandemics for over 100 years now, and I don't think this one will be much different. At Great Lakes Now, we aim to cover the Great Lakes region and the people who live here, like you. Please follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for our newsletter at greatlakesnow.org. This program is brought to you by the Fred A. and Barbara M. Erb Family Foundation, Lori and Tim Wadhams. The Consumers Energy Foundation is committed to serving Michigan, from preserving our state's natural resources and sustaining our future, to continuing business growth, academic achievement, and community involvement. Learn more at consumersenergy.com slash foundation. The Richard C. Devereaux Foundation for Energy and Environmental Programs at DPTV. The Polk Family Fund. Eve and Jerry Young. The Americana Foundation. The Brookby Foundation. Founders Brewing Company and viewers like you. Thank you. All right, so that was our segment. For uh, Detroit Public Radio listeners, you might recognize the voice there in our credits is Laura Weber Davis, who's now at Michigan Radio. And the narrator from that segment is Nick Austin. He's the host of Soul Saturdays on WDET. Uh, so if you're just joining us, I'm Sandra Sloboda. I'm the program director of Great Lakes Now. And I'm joined online by Amanda Murray. She's an aquarist at the Belle Isle Aquarium, and you just saw her in that piece, as well as Danielle Dabney, who produced the piece. So we had a couple of questions come in on Facebook. I'd like to remind the audience, if you have any questions, please type them in the chat under the stream. So Amanda, first questions are about the hissing cockroaches. First one is, why are they called hissing cockroaches? That's a good question. Um, they're called hissing because they actually do hiss. When they get scared, they push air through holes in their abdomen and it creates a hissing sound to scare off predators. And I suppose we can't really ask you to scare them so they do that for us on command. <laughs> Sometimes it's harder to do it. They, they don't always cooperate. <laughs> All right, and then how long has the Bella Isle Aquarium had these cockroaches? Do you know how long they've been there? Uh, here at the aquarium? They've been here um, probably about two and a half years. So they came with me actually. Where did you come from? So I previously worked at the Michigan Science Center. Okay. Um, we can see that you're standing in the aquarium. Can you give us a quick tour of what's around you before we come back to the cockroaches? Yeah, so you're looking at our aquarium and you can see our beautiful green ceiling um, meant to make it feel like you're underwater. Um, and our fish and the sides here, so I'm currently standing next to our South American fish, uh, such as our piranha and our silver dollars. Um, we also have my favorite fish, our Great Lakes fish, and they are on the opposite side right now. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions about the aquarium, I'd be glad to answer them. Go to you and let's talk a little bit to you. 
what were some of the challenges of producing that segment? And, and specifically for the aquarium, it's beautiful, but you know, lighting is always important in TV and sound. Can you just talk about the challenge of producing a segment that involves these different settings and, and, and creatures? Well, I have to start by saying it was a challenge because as a producer, I'm used to meeting with the people I'm going to interview and being with them for the full day and uh, kind of immersing in their world. And so this was the first time that we had to produce entirely through our laptops and um, over Zoom. And so um, it was challenging to try and figure out how are we going to make this feel like a story and bring that immersive experience um, to something where we couldn't be there in film. Luckily, the aquariums were already making great social content um, for their social media channels. And so we relied heavily on their relationships, on our relationships with them. and. Um, yeah, I, I, they they did a great job. So it made my job a little bit easier. <laughs> Amanda, can you hear me? Oh, yep, I can hear you. Okay. How long do the cockroaches live there? In the, either in the <laughs> wild or at the aquarium? What's their lifespan? Lifespan? Uh, they live about... Um, Three to five years. Uh, females typically uh, live longer than the males. And what do they eat? So in nature, they are decomposers. So they eat basically stuff that falls to the ground, like fruits and vegetables and all kinds of things. Um, I feed them that. They like fish-like food. Uh, they also love popcorn. That's their favorite. Is it, is it lunchtime for them or? Uh... Are they on a set schedule? I'm sorry, could you repeat? Is it lunchtime for them or? Uh, oh yeah, I do actually, I made popcorn for them. Um, I have it down here. So I will put some in here. We'll see if we can get them to, to come out a little bit. They like it because it's a very strong smell. We'll put some, see if we can get them to come over here. So they're smelling with their antenna right now. If you see them start wiggling their antenna, they are smelling. I got some here that are interested. Here we go. All right, let's see if they can come out for some popcorn. Now I know they're a little shy because they're in their travel container, but let's see. Are some of them shyer than others, or do they have distinct personalities? And that's not my question. Uh, that's actually from my mother on Facebook. But what, what kind of personalities do they have? Um, they actually, they, they do have somewhat of a personality, like a bug personality. Um, some of them I call sassier than others. They may hiss a little more. Um, other ones may be more calm. They might like, I might put one on my shirt and it will just sit there all day. Um, so it just depends on the roach. Oh, I see popcorn moving. Oh, and there's the cockroach. Oh, yeah, he's uh, definitely, definitely hungry. He's, he's, he's climbing on it. <laughs> so, uh, Danny, as a TV producer, have you ever been part of a cockroach cam before? This is the first time. Um, I didn't know that I actually had a thing for cockroaches till. <laughs> I'm, I met Amanda in the Belle Isle Aquarium. Um, it, it's kind of zen just to watch them roam around, right? <laughs> so Amanda, what is it about the cockroaches compared to the other creatures at the aquarium that you know, makes them you know, kind of popular and a, and a, and a good uh, TV subject? Well, uh, the fish are, are big stars here, but you can't, um, I mean, you can interact through the glass um, but what makes the cockroaches neat is that you can interact with them, you can touch them. Um, and the fish love it too, it gives them something to look at. Um, a lot of our fish in nature eat insects, so to create that sort of enrichment for them, something to look at, uh, entertains them when we're closed, so it's a good thing. When, I know that you guys are targeting uh, early September for hopefully reopening to the public, um, that's in flux as a lot of things in our lives are. 
Uh, in the meantime, of course, everyone can follow you on social media. Facebook will have updates and Bell Isle Aquarium on Instagram. Uh, but Amanda, you know, give us give us kind of the, the overview tour. When people come to the aquarium, what do they see there and how much can they interact with the animals uh, when they're not on a cockroach cam, when they're actually there in the aquarium? Well, when you come to our aquarium, um, you're going to see we have a lot of fish from around the world, but we do like to say we have a lot of our Great Lakes fish here, which are my personal favorite. Um, uh, we also have all of seven species of gar, and we have a very large collection of air-breathing fish. So believe it or not, some fish actually breathe air. How are they different than what we think of as traditional fish? Well, I'm sorry, there was a delay. Could you repeat? Uh, yeah, how, how are air breathing fish different? So some fish have to breathe air, like lungfish. Um, we have some from Africa and from South America, and they have to come up to breathe air. They can't breathe in the water. Other fish take in air as a supplement, um, just in case there's low oxygen in the water. So gar, long-nosed gar that we have native here in Michigan are actually air breathing fish. It, it sounds like you have a lot of different varieties, and, and I know you have a lot of different varieties of fish and other creatures at the aquarium. Um, you know, now that we're in this, you know, that, that you're not open to the public, what kinds of resources are there for people who want to make a virtual visit to the aquarium or who want to find, you know, some learning materials maybe for their, their youth at home these days? So we have a lot of um, videos and um, made by our wonderful education team. Um, they could probably talk more on that, but they have great videos of virtual tours, educational tours, and all that information can be found on our social media. Um, we do post videos um, and we try to do questions, Q&A on Instagram. So I suggest uh, follow us on social media and um, you're gonna get a lot of inside looks. We do stuff where you can see behind the scenes as well. So um, I suggest to follow us on social media. All right. Well, I'm looking, I don't see any more questions um, from, the, from the audience. Uh, it's, your, it's your last chance here on Facebook. Um, I want to ask Danny just one more question. Um, you know, we saw, we saw penguins, we saw the cockroaches from Madagascar, but as far as aquariums around the Great Lakes, what kind of opportunities do you think they provide people for getting to know the Great Lakes? How is that, how can that be done again without making those visits to the aquariums now that we're, that we're kind of on, on the shutdowns? How can people sort of translate that in, in, from the virtual environment to uh, with making a connection to the Great Lakes now? I think one of the things, well, that I asked everyone that I interviewed for the segment was, you know, what kind of are you noticing that people are more interested in the animals or, you know, now that it's closed, you know, are they, uh, is excitement building for them to reopen and come back? And again, everyone said, yes, we, we think that because the outside world is, is um, we're feeling more isolated, that we're looking to nature and turning to nature to find connection. And so, um, you know, all of these Aquarius, while Aquarius, while they are um, taking care of the animals, for them, building connection to the outside world, to the Great Lakes, um, and uh, our participation in their conservation is the, the best hope for their for their work. And so, um, you know, getting outside and and gardening or going to the lake and making sure you're social distancing. Um, I think, uh, you know, upon this time, we start to reflect and we start to notice more about our natural environment that we didn't before. And, and perhaps it encourages us to, to take a little bit better care of it. <laughs> Amanda, I just want to add to that as last words here. Hi, hello. Did you ask me a question? Yeah, any, any last words as we uh, wrap up and just before we go back to the cockroach camp, but it's uh, any any last words about the aquarium or the cockroaches or uh, recommendations for audiences uh, learning more about the Great Lakes in the future this year? So um, the last words about our aquarium, well, our aquarium is a very unique 
aquarium. Um, so we do suggest that you do follow us on social media so you can see it. And when we do reopen, to so please come visit us. Uh, we are uh, free to the public, um, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Um, we do eventually reopen, hopefully. Um, so you'll get to see all our great fish and you can come visit our roaches. And um, right now they're currently enjoying their popcorn. So <laughs> you can all see. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amanda. We'll uh, stay on the cockroaches. I'd like to thank everybody at the Belle Isle Aquarium and the Belle Isle Conservancy that helped put this on. Amanda Murray is the aquarist, of course. We have Mary Ogilvie and Taylor Mock working behind the scenes on education and communication. On the Great Lakes Now side, Danielle Daphne joined us today. She produced the segment that you saw. Rob Green is the supervising producer of our show and it's edited by Jordan Wingrove. Bringing you today's special is Zach Allen. He's a technical director at Detroit Public Television. He co-produced today's event along with Colleen O'Donnell, who is also our social media manager. Uh, I'm Sam Swoda, the program director for Great Lakes Now. You can follow us here on Facebook. We're on Twitter, we're on Instagram. Our website is greatlakesnow.org. And the Belle Isle Aquarium is also online. They have a web page. They have a Facebook page with updates and Instagram where they show more behind the scenes, not just of cockroaches, but of other uh, creatures, fish from around the world that are there at the Belle Isle Aquarium. I'd like to thank everybody so much who joined us today on Facebook, our supporters that make both the aquarium open to the public and supporters of Great Lakes Now who help us bring you all of this content. Uh, feel free to, to contact us in the future and we will be putting out some other events here. So with all of that, I wish you a happy Friday and thanks again.